Okay, so last episode I was complaining about having too puny a speaker. But I happen to have this bad boy right here, and I'm thinking I might be able to get this to work. Maybe. Now I'm quite interested in this speaker, because it's only got two connections. Which is a bit strange to me, because I would have assumed that you'd need at least like a ground, like a high voltage, and then the audio signal itself. But like, I guess the audio signal is itself a source of voltage. I may be completely wrong here, but like there's nothing else that I can plug into here. It says here to check the owner's manual. There is no way that I still have that. Okay, I forgot that the internet exists and I actually just found a version of the manual online. I'm trying to figure out what the inputs to this speaker actually mean. And I can't really find much particular information on that. However, the input impedance is 20 kilo ohms. That's exciting. So I want to verify that this speaker actually has the resistance that it says it does. So I'm going to do that using this simple circuit here where I can calculate the resistance using various applications of Ohm's law. Well, this is highly unusual. I'm getting a very strange result. It's as if there's no resistance at all within the speaker. Okay, so I had to actually change our resistance in order to get a readable result. The internal resistance of this speaker is nowhere near 20 kilo ohms. It is around about 7 ohms. I'm glad that I did that test. I was tempted to just assume that the resistance would be 20k. It turns out it is a little bit less. According to the specifications, the uh, power output of these speakers are uh, 10 watts RMS, which would be about like 14 watts max. But I'm, I'm definitely going to play it a lot safer than that because I don't really know what I'm doing. All of this implies that the maximum voltage I can give is 9.9 .9 volts, which is pretty much the maximum voltage I can get out of this thing anyway, so I think we're good. And I'm also just going to keep it a lot under that anyway because I don't want to hurt my ears. I have no clue how loud this is going to be. And that is the sound of success, baby. Now here's the real moment of truth. We've got our two sine waves ready to go. Let's show these speakers what we're made of. At one volt per wave, I can hear a little bit coming out from the speaker. At two volts, I can hear a little bit more. However, I am beginning to approach the point where I don't want to go that much louder. I'm getting some rather interesting results in my uh, in the sort of spectrogram. So with the speaker not connected, I get results like this which seem like sort of inconsistent. See, I'm getting weird shapes that seem to cap at about 1.8 volts. Like I can't get any further than that. I think that's just the maximum voltage I can give at this frequency through the USB connection or something. Okay, the speaker's connected, and you can see, even though the network is apparently purely resistive, there's the shape of the uh, wave seems different. I really don't know what to make of today's results as a whole. I'm gonna have to do more reading on how beats and combination tones work, because it's really going against what makes sense to my head. I guess we'll see what happens. I think next episode, I'll put all of this through a low-pass filter, just to see what happens. Just to see if it ends up with attenuating the entire thing, or if I end up with the beat frequency. You know, just see what happens.